Hello, my name is Guilherme Marcondes. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the postgraduate program in sociology at the State University of Ceará. I would like to voice my thanks to the organizers of this event. Thank you for having me. Thank you for accepting my work. I hope everyone is doing well in this very complex moment that we've been living with the COVID-19 pandemic. To those people who live in countries such as Brazil, people who are under government that update colonial practices, governments that establish policies of death, well, to those people, I would like to express my sincere solidarity. In addition to the pandemic, we've been constantly targeted by the state apparatus. But anyway, let me go straight to the point. The work that I'm going to present here today, well, actually, I'm shooting this video, but in any case, the title of my article is The Black Body in Brazilian Art, The Landscape to Retracting Resistance. This article is part of the postdoctoral research that I've been developing, in which I try to understand how race and gender operate in the legitimization processes of black artists in the Brazilian contemporary art. But to really get to the topic that I want to discuss with you, which is how these artists have been standing contrary to colonial standards, I need, at the end of the day, to set the stage to talk about the Brazilian national context on racial issues. I need to do that because I believe there is this image of Brazil as a racial paradise. This image is in force in our country. This image denies racism and denies the effects of racism on the processes of hierarchization and inequality in the country. This is a national vision that story has been developing, especially since the 1930s when the book Casa Grande e Senzala by Gilberto Freire was published. He's understood his seen as one of the fathers of Brazilian sociology. This theory becomes a version of our state, a state that will advocate to the fact that in Brazil there is no racism, that racism is an invention and that in our country we have a racial paradise, which to a large extent has been something questioned by black intellectuals over the dec decades. Since the 1970s and 1980s, we've had works by Abdias Nascimento. He actually started producing these ideas before, but these productions on the 70s and 80s by Abdias and Lelia are ideas that really question the racial democracy. Authors such as these ones have been demonstrating that the racial issue is something that we have to consider and understand so that we can really see the places or the sites for racially distinct people in Brazil. There is a racial hierarchy in place in Brazil. People who resemble or who are similar to European standards, people that are white, are placed at the top of the pyramid and black people experience or are the target of death policies. And these people live in the outskirts of cities, in impoverished areas, and they are the target of state death policies. No wonder in Brazil, young black people are the greatest victims of deaths as a result of the actions of the state police. No wonder in Brazil, the life expectancy of black people is different from the life expectancy from white people. So white people live longer than black people. So we see an intersection of issues of class and gender. And this intersection of social markers 
whether the racial issue is a central factor or a central marker, well, this establishes an unequal place for racially distinct people in our country. I think it's important to mention this because if we are to understand the works and the production that I'm going to mention, the artists I'm going to be mentioning during this talk, we have to understand what their context is, what this context is about and what they stand against. In broad strokes, if we understand that Brazil officially denies the existence of racism, then we can look at the history of Brazilian art. The artist Rosana Paulino, for example, in the cycle of debates, Diálogos Ausentes, that took place in Itaú Cultural in Sao Paulo, she revisits the whole of the national art history from early times to contemporary art to show how throughout Brazilian history, black people, indigenous people were being portrayed by white hands. White hands are the official artists' hands. Works that we still find in art history books. Images constantly reproduced, for example, by the paintings, just like Jean-Baptiste Debré, that appear in art books in general history books, when we talk about the enslavement of people in Brazil. Debre's paintings actually reproduced and portrayed this black population in this enslavement processes. They were kidnapped, they were put in a position of servitude. That's what was imposed on them. While the production of black people was often erased from the official history of Brazil and the history of Brazilian art. There is a project that is called A História da Arte in which they raised, for example, a series of books, a series of art history books that were being taught in art courses and graduate courses in Brazil. Most of these works used references or they used the work of white men or white women. The names of the artists were assessed, and out of these 200 artists, only 22 were black people. Actually, 22 were black women. So, Brazilian the Brazilian history of art erases the works of black people. And that is why I want to mention some artists, so we can think about all of those issues. Now, before that, it's also worth mentioning that only in the last two decades, in Brazil, a state policy to equalize people's position in society was put in place. That's when we started having policies of admission to university, for example. We have a series of affirmative action policies that were established in 2012. That's when there was a law that was enacted, and this law established racial quotas for those who were being admitted to higher education. With this policy, or after this policy was implemented, we've seen a change in the color of those who attend university. In Brazil, more than 50% of our population self-identifies as being black or under the black spectrum. In universities, we've seen an increase between 2010 and 2019 of 400 percent, according to the Brazilian Geography and Statistics Institutes. So there was a 400 percent increase in the number of black people in universities. 
This is an expressive change and this is very relevant. But if we consider that our population descend from black people, when we look at university attendees, we only have 38% of people who are black people. When, whereas if we look at our Brazilian population, we are the majority. I identify myself as a black person, I see myself as a black person. I also want to mention that there is a major flaw. We have to improve affirmative action policies and mechanisms. However, it's important to see that this massive entry of black people into university has caused different changes and transformations in various fields, and that includes the field of art. I interviewed 36 people in my, who are part of my research so far. They're from different regions in the country, from the northeast, the southeast, and central west regions. Out of these 36 people, 33 have been to universities, which is a very expressive number. The university is understood as the space of knowledge production par excellence. These people have been producing works, have been working as professors, and they've questioned the epistemology, paradigm, and the canon in place in the field of art. That is why in recent years in Brazil, we've been seeing a number of exhibitions and publications that have been focusing on the production of black people. We also see exhibits that rely on black artists that are organizing these exhibitions. But we can't be fooled by this quote anti-racism, which is only part of people's speech. According to my research, what I tried to do in my research, actually, is that before interviewing these artists, I looked for art galleries that could put me in contact with the artists they were exhibiting. I wanted to understand how many black artists were being portrayed in these exhibits. The market sort of legitimizes these artists as well. So I contacted 112 galleries, out of which 13 got back to me, and 10 were classified as galleries, as galleries that were the ones I wanted to understand better. They were part of the primary market. And out of these 10 galleries, these galleries totaled the works of 184 artists, but out of these 184 artists, only eight were black people. Some of these 10 galleries didn't even have any black people in their collection. Some of them represented or portrayed the work of the same person. So we see this rise of these ideas in the field of art, but this anti-racist practice is not really expressive. What we do see is tokenism. Out of these 36 people, I wanted to mention some of the works of these artists under this context. In this context, and considering these bodies, I believe these bodies have to be at the center of the debate. As they produce works, they are centered in the image of the black people. And the main focus is the conflict against the prevailing colonial standards. So we could mention the work of Ventura Profana, A Primeira Missa, in which she makes a digital intervention in a work by Victor Mireles that is from the 19th century. In this work, Ventura places her body on a cross. She's a black transvestite person. And in Brazil, trans people and transvestites, their life expectancy is 35 years. So there she is, 
placing her body as a way to fight racism, sexism, and cease heteronormativity, which will continue to operate in Brazil in general fashion and also in the field of art. We could even mention the work of Castiel Vitorino, in which she brings other epistemological paradigms. She uses interventions to her own body. In her series Corpo Flor, she deals with paradigms of another possibility of the world, another possibility that is not inside these colonial processes, in which this ordered world, as Denise Ferreira da Silva would say, this ordered world that was built from modernity, along with capitalism, the patriarchy that continues to operate today, which places people and sites at unequal levels. Castiel will think of an implied world, perhaps. We could say that this world, that Denise Ferreira da Silva will also state in her book, O Débito Impagável, based on another epistemes, black epistemes, that are Afro-diasporic, after all. I also wanted to mention the work by Marcel Martins Diogo in his black performance, in which he will draw blood from himself he will draw his own blood and write on the wall of a white cube. He will be writing the word negro, the word which carries so much weight and which has been so erased, so subordinated, depleted and massacred in Brazilian history, not only in the history of art. So his part of the history of art, and he writes the word negro with his own blood to this story. We could even mention the work of Priscilla Rezende in this performance, that she will put the word mulata on her body. She's dressed in carnival costumes, and she will dance samba until exhaustion. In this work, Priscilla is discussing and she's questioning the narratives that bestialize the bodies of black women. That is in, on the same lines with what Lelia Gonzalez will write in Racism and Sexism in Brazilian Culture, a text presented at a Congress in the 80s about the places on which black women were placed in Brazilian society, which range between desire and servitude. These bodies are understood as something that is desired, and at the same time, they are submitted or subjugated. Since I don't have much time to conclude, I wanted to say that this production of black artists that have attended university, that have intensely worked on different expressions of art, these artists have denounced, reported racism at both in society as a whole and in the field of art more specifically. These artists have spoken up. Some of them have done different, different things. They have thought of different possibilities in the world. These bodies of struggle, the bodies of work, bodies of desire, that wish to be part of a different reality. In the field of art, racism places black people at different places. We still see misogyny in the field of art. And as far as I understand, black artists, black curators, black people who work in the field of art in a general fashion have been working to dismantle or to debunk all of those paradigms and to change and transform the canons of art, centralizing the production of black people and correcting, correcting versions of the official history. These versions were used to maintain those unequal places for racially distinct people. 
I hope we can explore more of these ideas during the event. Thank you very much for listening.